Hello. Welcome. And good day. Hmm. Hey, what's up, Gonzo? Welcome. Hey, Smalio. Sound check. Okay, thank you so much. My music is borked. I'm going to fix that right quick. Okay. Come on now. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll probably have no music today. Not sure what I did. Not sure what I did here. Oh, OBS doesn't want to see my desktop audio anymore. All right, well, moving on. Uh, let's get that list up here, shall we? Today's music, well, ew, my, my thing is forked. Um, yeah. Hmm, I still wonder, but oh well, it'll be a quiet, chill day today then, huh? Sound check. Good. Okay. So yeah, yesterday we made the Lua mod. Um, as a quick review here, let's just take a look at. Uh, hey, Altariel. Good day. Thank you for joining. Shield unequipper. Yesterday we made the shield unequipper, starting from a just a simple text file. Um, <clears throat> and it's out there. I think basically in a in a final functional form I would like to add a MCP mode uh, because after further research it appears that the MCP feature actually will so if you have a uh, two-handed sword equipped and you equip a shield it would actually take the shield equip it and remove your two-handed sword um, whereas my script will be like no and unequip the shield just you know without prejudice so I feel like you know we could in a uh, add a MCP mode option in there, but uh, it'll be a little more complicated, obviously, than doing it the way we do it now. So it's like a stretch goal, but yeah. Uh, that's out there. We'll add this to 6.02. Um, this seems like a kind of a pretty vanilla friendly thing, you know? Um, so yeah, that was good times. Um, as I've got here today, uh, I wanted to do a GitLab issues review. We got quite a few things that are tagged as needs review, potentially to close things we've solved before. Um, I mentioned yesterday we wanted to do a 6.0 additions review. I got a bunch of stuff that's pending edition. And uh, we thought maybe we could talk about uh, if folks wanted to help out with testing. Uh, you know, we could carve out chunks of who wanted to do what. Um, and then as a 5.10.2 wrap up, uh, chatted with some of the folks on the team and I think we're going to put the folder creation command thing on hold just because that sort of ballooned into like a really complicated thing. Um, we'll just like comment that out in the code, you know. And then I think 5.10.2, uh, pending anything major in the GitLab issues, you know, we can wrap that up and then, yeah, resume a immediate focus on 6.0. Ideally, I would like to get an actual merge request open for 6.0 and then begin like actively deploying it to the website, you know, on the beta website so people can look at it. Um, poke it apart and all that good stuff so yeah all right jumping into it <clears throat> looking at uh gitlab issues i think this one that came in earlier today from eltariel aka ronick thank you so much for this one um and good catch here so uh it seems there is a slight load order issue here um that can be actually fixed by just swapping the plugin around so let me take a swig of coffee and then we'll take a look at where we got it in the website Ooh, oh yeah that's right <laughs> i got so excited about actually morwin stuff i forgot yeah actually the website doesn't run on my laptop anymore um because my uh linux distro has updated to python 3.12 and uh, they made some actually really good changes in Python 3.12 that uh, expose, unfortunately, some bad patterns we're doing in the website code base. 
Um, thankfully, it's nothing uh, not fixable, but yeah, just some stuff I've been kicking the can around and, uh, you know. Ooh, po yeah, I mean, yeah, we could totally do that too. Genounce, hey, welcome, good day. Thank you for joining again. Yeah, we could totally get that in there too. I'll put that on the list. Go ahead and uh, throw a link to a binary that I could download, if you please. Um, thank you so much. Um, you know, at the very least, I'll just run it. And, uh, you know, you can kind of walk me through it and we'll have like a rough dive right into it. Cool. That's exciting. I love shotgun ideas like that. Okay. Um, so cool. Yeah. I guess let's jump right into first fixing the website on my laptop. Yeah. Momo, right? That's exciting stuff. It's also like one letter off from M-O-M-W. I don't know. Okay. So check it. This is what happens. Oh, no, so we need to, uh, so one of the things we're not doing in the website code base, uh, you know, that we should be doing. Awesome, thank you so much, Python version, awesome, cool, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and open that on there. One of the things we're not doing in the website code base yeah, is it under releases, probably I can scoop it up from there. One of the things we're not doing in the website code base that has been a Python best practice for a long time um, is using a virtual env. I basically just worked around it because I didn't want to be sort of encumbered by having it as an extra step in my process. But at the end of the day, it's the right thing to do. You can think of it as like a, if you're familiar with wine and wine prefixes, it's like a wine prefix for your Python, a Python prefix. Um, so one of the things that I had done in here or thought I had done, let's open up the website source code. <clears throat> I had thought, all right, cool. Thank you so much for that link. We got this uh, Mo mods. Here we go. Cool. All right. Going to put that in my downloads folder and we'll come back to that later. Um, for now, we have to unbork the website. So I thought I did this the other day, but maybe I didn't actually automate it. Oh, if we look out here, yeah, I got this folder here called VMV. And so in a nutshell, VMV is basically like a folder that Python creates for you where it keeps all the libraries and code that you want to reference to your project that is separate from like what's installed on your system. You know, whether you're on Mac or Windows or Linux, you might, if you have Python installed, you got stuff that it came with. Um, on Linux, maybe you have other things too, third-party packages that are set up for your system, and you don't want to mess with that. So the VM helps you keep it separate. And so although the documentation for VM that it spits out when you – so I learned of this when I tried to run my code, and Python politely told me I was doing it wrong, and they suggested me the right way. But unfortunately, the output, which I can't reproduce right now, had the wrong command for VM. But to do that, we simply just uh, – let me zoom in a little bit more here, center it up. We just do a period here, or you can type source in VM bin activate, and I do activate.fish, because my shell here is a fish, which is the friendly interactive shell. And boom, now you notice here it says in parentheses, VM just to the left of my prompt. <clears throat> and that just is sort of a visual indicator of like where my Python stuff comes from now. I think even, let's see, Python. yeah, it even has like a, like a pseudo Python binary that knows to use this folder for everything. And so now when I do blah, 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 instead of complaining about no Django, we got Django. Now we don't have what? Something else. Pendulum. Yeah, here we go. And so the problem here, if you want to go really deep into the weeds, mm, yeah, here we go. That was trying to fix this furiously, even trying to fix this uh, the other day when I first realized that Python ha had updated on my system and I wasn't really paying attention. When the big list of packages came through, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Don't do that, by the way. Uh, so anyway, this is the neat thing that happens. Maybe they've updated since the other day and it will build. Yeah, here you go. I'm reasonably sure this is a problem with Pendulum itself. So, um, you know, we actually, it turns out we don't actually need it. Hey, Sector, good morning. Thank you for joining. Um, just unborking my 
Python here. Cuckoo, all right, happy scrum. <laughs> yeah, you know. So uh, we actually can use PyTZ. I think we actually already have it. Yeah, because something else uses it. I think Django actually installs it as a dependency. So we'll just um, take everywhere where we're using Pendulum, and we'll use PyTZ. Uh, really quick, though, let's make sure that it just actually works. This I believe it is drop-in replacement for PyTZ. Let's just make sure, though. Sunny. Send. What do we got here? Time zone. America, Chicago. Yeah, that's where we be over here. <laughs> I can't even. Okay. Okay. No problem. We'll just skip the project shell part here and just use regular S I Python. Excuse me. All right. So pi T Z. Uh, what were we doing here? Pi TZ time zone. Hey, all right. Yeah, so it should just work, actually. I should be able to actually just do like a blanket replacement. Okay, let's let's do this. I'm not gonna, well, I'll actually just delete that compiled Python file. I don't wanna muck with it. Probably setting on it won't do anything, but let's just delete it so it gets recreated and we don't muck with it. Okay, so what we wanna do is just basically replace Pendulum with PyTZ, nothing special. And I mean, that should just work, so. Uh, pendulum, PyTZ, which by the way, if you are not familiar, <coughs> we're using sed here. Which I was thinking about this the other day. Unix said this software may very well be, yeah, created in 1974, uh, 49 years old and still kicking. Okay, so that's what we want. For a little bit of Unix foo. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Should just work now. This looks like it's just working, in my opinion. Oh boy. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good sign. So okay. Yeah, just uh, out with Pendulum. <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, in back in with. I actually originally used PyTZ. Switch to pen. Switch to Pendulum after reading about it and was just like, oh wow, cool. They have a really nice website with documentation yeah you know so pendulum uh, the reason why i switched to it is because they advertise themselves as a drop-in for pi tz obviously they're also a dropout. <laughs> uh so yeah i mean for now we'll just uh we'll stick with pi tz our uh usage of uh yeah hey <laughs> yeah our usage of uh <laughs> excuse me hilarious our usage of this stuff is like very basic, you know, so I don't think we need to worry about functional differences between PyTZ and Pendulum. So, okay, let's go ahead and, oh my, what do I, wow, I have a bunch of stuff. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Hmm. All right, we're going to have to go through this one, and I have a bunch of stuff that I intended to commit and never did, so we're going to have to just go through this one at a time. All right. First off, let's fix PyTZ stuff. We're going to put all that into one. PyTZ. PyTZ. Files we've never seen before or haven't seen in years. Now getting some attention. Yeah, the only thing we're doing with our time zone code is just like taking a date string and getting a date object so we can do Python stuff with it. Um, nothing crazy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Gonzo, good call out here. Well, I will take a moment, and uh, I've talked about this on the stream before, 
but for the benefit of everybody. What you're looking at here on the right-hand side of my text editor is called Magit. And uh, as it says here, it is a Git porcelain inside Emacs. Um, and uh, basically a Git porcelain is like uh, just a fancy way of saying a kind of client, right? Like when you say Git commit from the command line, you're using the Git client. Magit is uh, a Git client inside Emacs. Um, and we'll leave it at that for now, suffice to say. But yeah, when you see me doing this stuff, that's Magit. Uh, and as you can see, it's super powerful, right? Like if I want to just add just these two lines, I can highlight them. I'm holding shift and using the arrow key down and I can hit S to just stage that chunk. Um, yeah, who it's magic, man, for sure. It's super powerful and I can do the reverse with unstaging, you know, it's like, I don't even know how you do that with a command line client. Can you even do that? I don't know. It's, um, and if I hit dollar sign here, it actually shows me like the commands it's doing. So I can have some insight, right? And yeah, just, uh, you know, if I want to look at the guts. Um. <laughs> yeah, right? So so this thing, I think, under the hood is using the raw git commands. It's just abstracted them in a beautiful way that uh, makes it actually pleasing to review diffs. All right, so we'll just toss this in there, pendulum. So we're going to... And I don't think we need to lock to a specific version of PyTZ. I think we want just whatever, like, the newest one is. Honestly, I'm willing to gamble that on a few things. Um, PyTZ being one of them. Yeah, yeah, that looks good for now. Uh, test requirements, same thing here. Cool, nice, sublime merge, okay. Yeah, you know, before I became an Emacs, you know, 100 percenter, Daily driver, er, uh, I use Sublime for non Python stuff. And for Python, I used uh, JetBrains, PyCharm, which, you know, their stuff is phenomenal. If you got the dough and you want to write some Python and you want like the best editing experience available, it's worth it for a license. Even the free version is good too, though. For uh, let's pull it up here uh, PyCharm. These, these folks make fabulous tooling for coders. Um, I used this for years, and eventually I was able to replace most of the things that it did that I really needed with Emacs in a, in a sufficient manner. Yeah, PyCharm, props. <clears throat> I highly recommend using this. I bet you VS Code, also pretty good too, uh, uses the same language server stuff under the hood. Anyways. Mm, oh, yeah, and I wanted to just unversion the Psycho PG2 binary, I think, because this version at least was too old to work with, like, some of the new PIP stuff. Um, I just hope it works in CI. We're going to find out. Mm, yeah, okay. That way, in case, you know, future me is like, wait, why the heck did you do this? You know, maybe I will feel compelled to move back to Pendulum again. Nothing against, nothing against Pendulum as a project either. You know, sometimes these things happen. I actually have a Python project that won't install now. Uh, that reminds me, I got to commit those changes later today. But yeah, if you try master of my Musico Fidi project, it's not going to install today. Until I push the changes that I already made to fix it. So, okay, let's push this up. I'm honestly curious if CI is going to pass. Uh, here we go. Joe Toho, hey, good day. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, okay, that's, uh, that's good feedback. Um, I will say the opposite is, of course, true with, uh, magic. We'll just keep this thing open so at least my tab blows up. This thing will turn into like a red X if it blows up and I'm not looking at it. All right, coming back to here now. So I had a bunch of in-progress stuff here. What did we, what did we even change? Oh yeah, so so JFK, 
and a, and a bunch of related stuff, right? Um, with the merged, I may have even actually deployed that to the main website. Let's just because that's like kind of a you know, that's kind of an important change. If not, I sincerely apologize. No, no, no. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Oh, yeah. So I never liked, actually, so I will say I was just praising PyCharm, but I never actually liked their Git integration. Actually, I agree with Joe Toho. Aside from Magit, every uh, built-in Git integration I've ever seen, I basically hated. My first exposure to a VCS client was with a Tortoise SVN for Windows when I worked in a shop that used Subversion. Um, and it was basically like right-click, you know, context menu, which, uh, you know, worked pretty well, I guess. All right, so anyways, we got to get that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, subversion is, you know, it's whatever. Really hard to get it to perform well. Uh, if you're using, for example, maybe it's changed in like 10 years since I used it, but mod SVN was like single-threaded and very bad performance-wise. All right, so yeah, we updated that last weekend. That's what that's for. Um, this too, okay, okay. This is a separate update. We'll go over that in a minute. Change logs. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. That's my, you know, some people like that uh, user experience. So, also, Gonzo, <laughs> I found this, this was interesting. I know you've been update. I think you put these change log entries in when my Emacs ran. So, when I save a file, before it actually writes the file, it will run the black auto formatter. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it apparently felt the need to format it like this and not like this. I don't know if you have something on your editor like that that runs black, but yeah. Are you using VS Code? Yeah. I mean, it's not like I don't... Honestly, I think the way you did it is fine, but this thing will obsess... Yeah, this thing will obsessively try to keep the lines like underneath, I think, 80 some odd. Oh, no. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so I mean, one thing you can do is... uh in the website code base, in the make, make file, file, um, if you search for black, here we go, this is actually the um, command you want to run, is just black dash dash check period, so like, like this, oh hey look, the website's up, black check, boom, like this, um, and if you actually have black installed, oh boy, um, well, wait a minute. This is an opportunity to install black into our VM. Let's do this. Good, good. Uh, there you go. Black check. <clears throat> yeah, wow. Oh, me, oh, my. So this is, though, um, let's go take a look at our CI window here. Right, exactly, Doto. That's practical. Um, really, we we don't have so really our black. We should have a project specific black config. Maybe we need an issue for this, because we should just ignore these migrations files. They're auto generated, and it wants to change all of them. And it's like I don't care, you know. Um, Django auto generates these when we make changes to our schema via the models.py file. Um, but like, so when we when we distill those out. You know, we're left with, cool, cool. Um, oh, okay, fine. Yeah, it's writing to standard air. Um, when we when we grep those out, though, it's like two or three changes here, right? So cool. Thank you, Gonzo. Appreciate that. Um, there has to be a way to make like project specific rules because this won't happen in the version of Black. That is, yeah. Here you go. It's fine. Um, we can see black happening right here in CI. This is an environment that is, let's see, I want to say it's Debian. Let's look in the Docker file here. Debian 10.4. So, um, you know, it's an older, it's a bit, thank you, see that issue coming through. Yes. Um, it's a bit of an older, you know, Debian, uh, even the new released versions of Debian have old versions of, th versions of things. And I think Debian 12 is the newest Debian now. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so te Debian 10.4, whoa, you know, we got to, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe update 
what we have in here. Certainly a lot of this has to change, right? Wow, Selenium drivers. This part of the code doesn't even work anymore. Um, I'm tempted to just, since I'm in here, comment that out. We can save CI time. Whoa, whoa, what did I do? Hey, don't try this at home. Save the CI time. We don't need to be downloading the Gecko driver. Um, okay. Right, like we don't need the... This, all this stuff was so that we could run a web browser and a server without a display in a, what we call a headless way. Um, I'm going to leave all that there for now, though, and go back to the thing that I was doing before. Which I actually forget what that was. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. We will let that do. This is interesting. D damn it, dot pi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's not my code, so I guess I'm not going to worry about it, but that's always fun. Kind of thing you see when Python updates. Okay. Uh, yes, we were looking at the diff here. All right. And I was complaining about Python Black. <sighs> All right. Let's go ahead and put this change through. And uh, so... This is a beautiful look at our new data organization because we uh, have always had the mod on our list for the assets. But now we're just adjusting the plugin content explicitly, right? So this diff will look, you know, in the context of the specific change that we're making, it will be very informational. Mm -hmm. All right. So do we have an issue for this? Oh, I already had that tab open. I'm a big derp. Uh huh. So, what am I looking for? Maybe we can just search for JFK. Negative. Maybe nobody submitted an issue for this. I'm going to just take a quick look. Hmm. Okay. We don't have an issue. If we did have an issue, though. Okay, thank you, Altario. I was looking over here. Didn't see your comment come up. Thank you so much. Very much appreciate that. So we're just going to go ahead and put this down as uh, K to the J. Uh, move my mouse cursor. Sheesh. JFK OAB ship merged patch. And, uh, okay, so this, I'm just save some time, lump that in there as well. Um, and I had some good feedback from Gonzo and Herdrex, actually, about this one, and I'll go ahead and share it with you folks. Um, let's uh, post, here we go. Um, and that is just a simple addition to the MLMW post processing pack documentation of what's direct links of what's included. It was sort of implied... Um, in the readme, you know, I definitely credit folks. If we look over here, everybody gets credited. Um, and there are links that you can click here, but now it's like more prominently featured. And that includes also an update to the website to have the same links. And, you know, big shout out. And thank you to all these shader authors. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, I tried to dabble in writing shaders once, and it was just like, whoa, too much for my caveman brain. So most respect and love to all those folks who made these things. So let's go ahead and toss that in there. Um, I'm not going to put a change log entry because I just, you know, it's kind of an incidental change. Um, Cool, cool. All right. And then, so, yeah, we decided that uh, even though we got really close with the uh, folder command stuff, we're going to go ahead and comment it out, put it in the in the to-do list for 6.0.
because it's starting to delay this release a little bit and uh, you know we just want to get 5.10 out there with some important things to fix uh, including you know some new stuff that's come up like this very important uh, load order we'll go ahead and get this assigned this we'll find out what this affects exactly and tag it appropriately <clears throat> excuse me all right um, so we're gonna do like a for real Django comment block here just to seal it off Okay, and then also um, to remove the database hit from the page loading, we'll disable the stuff in the view. Uh, so this would be director, this one right here. Okay, and we're gonna and basically all these guts here can just. And that'll make the page go from like taking a couple seconds to load to boo insta load. Uh, ooh, and on that note, here we go. Let's take a look. So far, so good. And so the page we're talking about here, this one. Yeah, insta load. Cool. And. Folder path stuff, gone for now. Doesn't even show up because it's a Django comment. Doesn't even show up if you look in the source. Uh, if we did just like a HTML comment, it would still show there. But uh, yeah, good deal. So let's uh, this. We are gonna do an HTML comment for this, just because it's not. Costing a lot to render that URL, um, and then yeah, later on when we do the change log for 6.0.0, we'll just like remove this or whatever. It's fine there right now. Don't want to delete it though, because yeah, that's what the entry will be when we do add it. So okay, and this puts us in a position to tag and release 5.10.2. Yippee! All right. So, okay, jumping into this one. Uh, let's, uh, there we go. Okay, so thank you so much for including these links. That's exactly the information I need. We're going to find out what lists this affects, and it looks like, As I try to limit, so I just had a thought here looking at this. I try to limit quest additions to graphics overhaul, and I would love feedback from people about this. Keep graphics overhaul strictly focused on graphics. The unfortunate side effect of that is like many, many good mods include both visual aesthetic additions as well as quests and stuff, um, including Library of the Beck. TR, right? Exactly. <laughs> Agreed. So, yeah, I don't know. And I believe we have TR on this one, right? Let's take a quick look. Um, we sure do. So, yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, this is, I feel like, a philosophical discussion we shouldn't have right now. We'll just keep it as is. This uh, issue affects, though, total overhaul, expanded vanilla, and graphics overhaul. So let's tag it as such. And do I have another appropriate, this is not a data feature, nor is it a mod edit. I think maybe we need another tag. It's not super critical, but maybe we need a, another tag for like issues with data because this would be a data issue. What do you mean, Johnny? I'll show you. We have our data here, plugin order. And so, uh, Ronick helpfully says here, after some trial and error, found out it was caused by, of all things, Secrets of Crystal City edits the same entries for the background topic. Spicy. <laughs> and good find. That's 
good sleuthing. Um, that's the kind of thing you almost want to have like a like a video of the brainstorming powwow. No MLOC's rule for it. Oh, okay. My people that keep MLOC's rules up to date. Let's come together. Oh, man, we still got to look at Ferris's port or whatever, too. Somebody's got to remind me uh, for uh, maybe next week or something. But we got to give some MLOC's love to our documentation and also on the stream. Um, okay. Well, so um, if Library of Vivek is loaded after Secrets of the Crystal City, it appears to solve the issue. So. We got, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, what did I just do? Don't try this at home, wow. <clears throat> 272, wow. So this is quite the quite the migration for this one. We got this one is at line 272. This one is at line 2,623. So it will be interesting to note, um, what all happens when we do this, but I mean, you're playing at Altariel um, and did some trial and error, so I will take that as some good evidence that this is a stable load order. We're going to put it in there, and we'll reference uh, we'll reference this issue here uh, by putting a pound sign 312 in our commit message. You'll see. All right. Uh, now we'll have this is the kind of thing we want to change log entry for so people can know to update their own maybe they haven't gotten to the quest that's concerned here yet so sounds like a thing that can be updated mid playthrough though so that's good uh, okay <laughs> yikes <laughs> Don't try. I don't even know what happened that at home. When text editing goes bizarre. All right. Come on now. You should like this. There you go. Fifteen. Wow, time flies. Okay. And so we're... Really only uh, touching this one. Hmm. What did I just do? Oh my. We're just so full of don't try this at homes today. Wow, we... Plug in to load after, but we're still going to reference uh, this one just so that, um, you know, the the information will exist in the issue, in the git commit message, uh, but we'll put it here on the changelog too for you folks that don't read git, understandably. And, you know, um, I was just thinking it would be really cool. Maybe we'll just make this right now. Oh, hey, ho, oh, check this out. Okay. Um, what are you thinking? I'm thinking we need a helper, sort of like our link thing here, that will render issue links. I still don't understand what you mean, Johnny. Stay with me. Uh, okay, we don't actually need that. Yeah, yeah, okay. You're picking up what I'm putting down, right? We're gonna do this. And this will be number. Uh, number. I think this is going to be good. Okay. Come on, LSP. You're happy with this. You might know, by the way, we got these blue squiggly lines. 
Uh, and this is something that Joe Toho actually mentioned just a little bit ago about line endings. Um, but yeah, this is we need some kind of. I think this is Flake Eight. This is a Flake Eight config. Hold up, just one second, too. There we go. <laughs> Get some sun in here. This is, I think, a Flake Eight config. Um, ooh, now it's too much. I'll have to change it, but not right now. All right, um, let's load that. I'm gonna crunch the website and then fix my curtain because now I can't see my screen even. Too much sun. My pale white skin is blinding you all. All right, here we go. So, um, there we go. All right, while that's chugging, still can't really see my display but whatever this should work and what I want to do is now we can easily in change logs reference a GitLab issue like this uh, see issue and uh, so what's this one 312 and we told it to be an integer so we don't even have to quote it I don't think I'm gonna go ahead and just Blow that up. All right, cool. This would be great, I think. All right. So, uh, fun fact for those of you uh, interested in coding and wanting to do that kind of a thing, when you're working on a platform like GitLab, and specifically on GitLab, if I want to, say, refer to an issue in my Git commit message, which, taking a step back, when you're working with Git, part of the whole workflow is uh, commit and then push, and when you commit, you have to put a message in. Uh, and I've talked about this before, but typically you want something useful related to what you're doing. And one of the cool things you can do with GitLab is you can take the issue number, number 312, and you can literally write that in here in your commit message. Let's type my password in there. And then when you push it, like magic, boom. GitLab will add a reference to it there. And even when you look at the commit, it will link back to the issue right here. So it's just kind of a neat thing. I think GitLab does a, a similar thing, you know, um, kind of a neat thing you can do when uh, you're contributing to this or any other project. All right, let's see. I pushed it before it blended or didn't blend because I was anxious to show the, the number. Still crunching. Mm, yeah, yeah. You can also put the, the short SHA, meaning the first 12 characters of the commit SHA, and that will link back to the SHA, and certain other magical things happen. All right, here we go. So, if everything blends the way I want it to, we can go here. And we have a nice... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a good that's a good pattern. Totally, Joe Doho. Yeah, for sure. Um, absolutely right, because that kind of a thing, yeah, that's a really good call-out, because that kind of a thing definitely locks you into, like, the GitLab way of doing it, for example, or the location of the project. So, yeah, uh, good call-out, and that definitely makes you a little bit more agnostic kind of to where you are. Um, I feel like we should have um, taken a step back, and maybe, Gonzo, if you want to file an issue for this... <clears throat> we could have like a developer document where we sort of say like the guidelines of doing that and, and we think about things like what Jotoho meant, you know, like uh, um, fixes with like the full GitLab issue URL, um, that kind of a thing. Depends on how strict we want to be though, you know. 
But it would be cool to have an issue at least documenting the need for it. So, yeah, yeah, I love it. Uh, anyways, oh, yeah, you can see here it looks like it blended, right? I can open this up. Here's the issue. And all I had to write in the code, just zooming in here, is I put issue 312. Boom, just like that. So, yeah, now you can write a, a link to a mod like this, like we have always been able to do, thanks to our little helper up here. And now we have another one where you can refer back to an issue with just this little helper. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so, I, th I think that's, I think that'll handle this one. I'm going to go ahead and also add our label here, review to close. And let's refresh the issues page. Ah, uh, yeah, this one right here. This is a great one. Thank you, Sophia, for submitting this one. Yeah, so thank you, Gonzo. So we actually have, uh, before we jump into that one, we already have... Developer's Guide. Which is, uh, you know, getting your computer set up to run the website so you can edit it, that kind of a thing. Um, and so maybe what we need is an extension to this or a separate document or a separate page. Um, I feel like this is the kind of thing that should live with the code base somehow. Um, I don't know. We got to talk about it. It's not the kind of thing that we're just going to kind of have, but we should have something like it to help people who are interested in working on the website code make it easier for them, you know, um, to, to do things in the way that we expect them to, right? Because, like, we had the uh, <laughs> the black formatting thing, right? Um, so that sort of thing. All right, well, uh, let's take a look at, thank you so much, Sophia, for submitting this about a month ago. Yikes. Sorry about the delay. Okay, so we have slight warping. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Oh, wow, I forgot I even wrote something here. Cool, cool. Okay. Interesting. So we are adding normals. I right, let's fire that up right now. Um, get ready for some potato mode ness here. But let me make sure I got my. Uh, whoop. Total overhaul config. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's make sure I got some potato friendly configs here. Okay, yeah, object paging, a little more potato friendly. Good. Oh, Sophie, by the way, I didn't forget you mentioned about uh, fireplace and servants' quarters, and those are getting added too. I did try those, and they're getting added. Ooh, yeah, Joe Toho, we do conventional commits at work, actually. And, um,. Yeah, good call out. Very, very good call out. We do it at work. And one advantage of conventional commits, if everybody plays by the rules and does it right, is you can have tooling automatically generate change logs relatively easily because of the conventions used in conventional commits. Um, something to think about. It all ties back around to like how seriously do we want to do this? Um, and I mean, it could benefit the project for sure. Gonzo, if you want to note conventional commits in the issue, if you, if you file it, um, yeah, good call out, man. We do it at work, and I gotta say, um, it, it is valuable for sure. Um, if, if you if everybody does it right, you know. So, all right, where are we? What are we doing now? Oh, hey, oh, we got my config here. We got this here. Okay, so let's look at what my setup is local for this one. Uh, the important, important comment. Good call out, Sophie. Thank you. Files use an H. Okay. Okay, so that could be the source of our conflict, right? We have some like borked height map that doesn't go with the thing we're using. Hmm. That's something I should make the OpenMW validator check for, honestly. Right? Because you typically, you want the NH to go with the accompanying normal map and not something else. Like maybe it'll, you'll get lucky and it'll work. Okay. Looks good. Here we go. We're good. 
after spiraling my laptop into a circle of death last weekend, I was a little worried if I did it again. But we didn't, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good call out. So we'll do a quick ORI and see what happens. Should be a big clue. Um, on that note, we're going to... Whoa, hey, okay. Give myself some more terminal space here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, Eltariel. Sure, absolutely. Um, Which module is that in? Because actually, um, good call out there, too. We're actually not going to use all of them in total overhaul. Um... My goal is to kind of keep a, wow, <laughs> as, I, as I'm about to say, my goal is to keep kind of a metric for performance. All right, cool. We're definitely using that one. Awesome. Um, anything we put in total overhaul, I want to run on the Steam Deck as kind of like a bar of performance, right? Like, you can definitely go crazy and add much more. Many people do. But yeah, just as like a sanity check for our content, you know, to make sure we're keeping ourselves grounded. Because not everybody's got like a, a myself included, frankly, obviously. <laughs> okay, so while we're here, first off, let's look at the mushroom UV here. I'm going to slow myself down by quite a bit. There you go. Okay. So it seems to confirm I'll have that issue too. Ah, great question, Do Joto. Uh, my PC is not a potato at all. Um, it's a framework laptop with a 12th gen Intel CPU that otherwise, as a programmer's machine that doesn't have to run total overhaul mod list kind of graphics, it's awesome, right? Like, I can compile Linux in under an hour, like 45 minutes. Um, it's beautiful. Normally, not really very potato-y, but yeah, I've got three displays right now. I'm streaming, so that's why it's like sometimes it kind of chugs. When I'm not streaming, being a, like, GPU-heavy thing, you know, um... Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> so it's a it's a potato for GPU stuff, right? It's the integrated graphics stuff. Yeah. So when I game, uh, like actually playthrough sessions, though, I do bring my gaming PC, which has a fifty seven hundred XT AMD, which is not the newest GPU, but it does pretty well. All right, so let's see what we got here. So yeah, they're clearly coming from two different sources. Um, here we got the NH. Well, wait. So no, that's the pod wall. Okay, Par we want the parasol coming from this parasol height map coming from normal maps for Marwin. So yeah, I think Sophie. There you go. Confirms now. So let's look at it here though, because I don't think, despite doing the wrong thing, obviously. I don't see the issue here. Uh, 03 is especially bad. 0102, a one stretchy part on the side. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, so this is it right there, right? Ew, ooh, look at that. Oh no, that's it though, right, huh? That's it. Whoop, whoop, my bad. There you go, you could totally see it, look at. Oh no. So, what we're gonna do now we're going to go ahead and open up this one and we're just going to we're going to rename or we'll pull it out of the way and just uh, I'm sure that it will fix the issue but uh let's go ahead oh yeah Eltariel by the way you asked on Discord I think that's the one um we'll go back there in a moment we'll try to figure out maybe if I can rehost that or I'm not sure what the pro I'm a little uneasy about doing that kind of thing maybe we can temporarily post it on GitLab to make it available Normal maps for Morrowind, O3 Telfani. Textures, we'll open in a new window here. Good deal. Thank you, Sophie. Emperor Parasol, TXM, Parasol, and H. So this is the one we want to nuke. 
um, I believe. But not just 01, right? There's probably 03, yeah. 01, 02, 03. We'll gank those out of there. Are there any others that you know off the top of your head, Sophie? Um, let's axe the game. On the subject of streaming from non-potatoes, though, too. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Hopefully this fixes it. On the subject of playing from a non-potato, though, too, I've been actually using my Steam Deck as my main gaming device. As I mentioned, that's like the the target platform. And uh, I was experimenting with a way of using a capture card to stream gameplay from the Steam Deck. So, Emperor Parasol 01. Oh, okay. The other ones work fine. Okay. Good deal. We'll see what we end up with then with some good old ORI output. But yeah, I've been playing the the new experimental mod list, Just Good Morrowind. Uh, I've been playing that on my Steam Deck. And it's good times, and it would be cool to stream a session of that. Interesting. Is that a, maybe a quirk with like a mesh from Titties, I wonder? Or is that like a just the vanilla mesh behavior too? I can't remember if Titties has a mesh. They're mod or not, excuse me. All right, I think it's almost Momo time, too. We're going to take a quick look at that. We'll install some stuff. Let's pull up the FPS here. I ideally can keep it once it loads and I'm not streaming. Despite this being a potato, actually I get around 20 FPS here in Sadrith Mora, and this is the heaviest performer in the game, I think, uh, outside of, of course, old Evan Hart. Gotcha. Cool. Good feedback. Thank you. All right. Can I move now? There we go. Now I can move. All right. Let's get in there, shall we? And actually, let's first... Yeah, number two, right here. Maybe we'll try to find a number three. Oh yeah, and also at your recommendation, Sophie, I did, as you can see, plug in the Hasfats HQ textures. Uh, thank you for that call. It looks like they're working well. Let's try and find a number three, shall we? One, one, one. Hey, <laughs> Sector. Yeah, we were fix we we're unborking some uh improper usage of or lack thereof uh in the project usage of virtual amp and I had to ditch an old time library by the docs. Thank you, Sophia. Let's go there. Yeah, yeah, we already swallowed that mouse. Got the uh the stream mascot over here wrapped around my speaker at the moment. O two, O two again. This, this one, no. Maybe we can. It always rains in this game for me, I swear. To the left of the one. Okay, thank you. We're gonna... What? I typoed it.
All right, Todd, you win. Oh, yeah, I can see right here. Woof. This already doesn't look good. Oof. All right, so what do we got here? Coming from Hasfats, I guess? Oof. Yeah. Whoa. All right. This one's really, this is like, cannot unsee material. I'm going to, but we're using the, okay, so we have the normal map from that. Where's the NH coming from? I don't see a, so maybe it's the, <clears throat> maybe it's colliding with this spec map from a completely different, you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, comment out Hasfat real quick. Oh, yeah? So you actually, in your output, you actually had... Hmm, all right. And you have has Hasfat loaded, too, I assume. Tricky load order business. Gotcha. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. My my load order must be borked. I must I must not have it loading li loading late enough. Um. Yeah, we gotta fix this. This is definitely one of those you cannot <laughs> unsee kind of a thing. You know. Let's just zoom over there, shall we? I already see kind of right there. You cannot. You can do it, little buddy. Come on. Yeah, okay. Intel. Oh, I can't even move yet. Shucks. Yeah, okay. All right. So, we've definitely confirmed that this is an issue, though, with many of our different configurations, possible configurations. Um, looks like some mesh surgery is needed, clearly. But, yeah, you just... Uh, uh, oh, my. Oh... Uh, no good. All right. And then we'll fly over here before I... Oh, geez. I can see it from here. Oh, no. Okay. Well. There isn't anything, unfortunately, I can do about that right now. But good call out, Sophia. I really appreciate the, the great research. Uh, on this issue, and yeah, um, w when we go live with 6.0, we're gonna we need to make make sure and pay special attention not only to this specific collision mismatch of uh, normals, but um, I feel like this is something tooling should warn us about. You know, um, maybe a mod manager could detect this kind of a conflict. Certainly, the OpenMW validator tool that I wrote could do it. Uh, I digress. That's something, that's something that we'll need to think about more. I still need to finish migrating the validator over to GitLab, and we can start filing issues for it and stuff. Awesome. Okay, all right, moving on. So, yeah, can't, unfortunately, solve that one uh, today. Cool. This one, this was really great. Um, a lot of stuff here, actually, that I had never seen. We'll just take a quick look at some of these then. Um, 
We'll start with this one, and then we'll give Momo a spin, and then we'll go back into it. Ah, Kalinter. Lots of good work from them. This is, like, pretty new. Um, wow. Good stuff. I love that bridge. Yeah, I think this one's a no-brainer for sure. Um, gonna go ahead and uh, steal your formatting. And I think this one would fall under, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this one would fall under landscape kind of stuff. been a minute since we jumped in here. Ooh, so much stuff crossed out. It's beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Mm, we'll toss it at the bottom since Gonzo already knocked out. Gonzo and Herdrex already knocked everything out of there. Whoa, whoa, we're not crossing it out. Getting crazy now. Cool. Great call out. I love it. Um, definitely worth a look. I'll set that up locally later on today. Great seawall of Vivek. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and assume that you're playing all of these with, you know, the full loadout. Um, but we'll have to note, you know, just how it works with BCOM. I assume it's fine. Same goes for all of these, of course. Ooh. Yeah, you know, I always thought that it was bizarrely empty here, you know, kind of looking at, like, you know, just the temple where the god lives. Nothing big. <laughs> awesome. This is another good one. Looks to be. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, I mean, definitely fine with BCM. Cool. One of the little landscapes. Okay, okay. Nice. Includes the replacer. That's got to love it. Lovely, lovely. Um, This one, no-brainer in my opinion. For total overhaul and expanded vanilla, certainly. And this is another landscape one, I would say. Mm hmm. Right. And and not just because it's convenient, but also because like the author has created it. They have thoughtfully done the patch, you know, assumingly. All right. Oh, nice with the. Uh Interesting. If we don't have that in here already, Sophie, please hit us with a link. Ah, uh, yeah. Looking ahead, I looked at this one and passed on it because exactly this, but if it's not a big deal, we can consider to add it. Ooh, this looks fantastic. I got to tell you, that's some art right there. Wow. Yeah, this is awesome. Great find. Looks like some familiar normals here.
no, no, you cannot. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you basically see this, and you're like, oh, okay. We're adding it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's great. What can I say besides just wow? Um, so this will be under if I have a dungeon. Uh, no, 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 no. What What are you doing to me, GitLab? Here we go. We got a dungeon section. Fantastic. All right. And as I mentioned a minute ago, I did look at this one. But as is noted, yeah, so this is what we need. Does anybody have a link to this specifically handy? Um, I basically stopped because I didn't want to search for this link. <laughs> and it's not directly linked here. So, um, oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah, there you go. Goes right to it. Wow, awesome. Props. Appreciate that. Okay. Well, um, you know, I prefer not to link directly to Discord, but, I mean, maybe we can get permission from whomever to, uh, yeah, super thanks for that. Maybe we can get permission from whomever to um, rehost that, you know, um, on GitLab or some other place that's a little more safe. Okay, this one is for sure an addition, too. Thank you for doing the research, Altario. Ramiro's posted the file himself. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so then I, I guess we can safely assume that it has the same permissions as uh, Ramiro's, which I believe allow us to host a plugin. So I would like to do that. We'll put that probably in the MOMW patches repo. All right. And I think we'll put this under cities, yeah. It's almost Momo o'clock. We're getting there. Excellent. Um, I'm going to actually, you know what, I'm going to put a... I'm going to put an additional note here. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Good research, Altariel, uh, once again. Um, Uvirus Legacy is such a huge... It's such a mind-numbingly huge mod... Even if you've played it and you know how big it is, when you actually look at the guts and you see how big it is, it's just like, wow. Um, cool. Yeah. Good to know. Um, I'm hoping stuff like that is not unfixable. It just might be, you know, uh, some effort required. But, you know, we can do that. Show Garth Shrines. Okay. Mm. Wow. All right. Include this plugin in the. Uh, and uh, I'm in the process of renaming the total overhaul patches as the MOMW patches. Just taking a while because life, the universe, and everything. You know how it'd be. All right. So this one, let's talk about this one. The intention of this one being, uh, ooh, Uvirus Legacy Anti-Cheese Patch. Love it, Sophia. I would love that. That's something that I've always wanted to do with that mod, actually, ever since I've seen some of the cheesier things in it. 
if you want to create an issue for that and kind of outline some things, you know, maybe um, it, I'm not off the top of my sh head sure how to do like spoiler tags in GitLab Markdown, but yeah, maybe, um, you know, we can mark things as spoilers as need be. But yeah, if we could document that kind of stuff and, and that will help us build a patch uh, for that kind of, you know, thing that I'm in, fa I'm in favor of it for sure. Cause I love you all, but yeah, some of the things like don't fit with what we're trying to do in total overhaul, expanded vanilla, you know, we're trying to like de cheese this thing a little bit. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, okay. Up until I clicked on this link, inside my head, I was kind of against this replacement. But then when I clicked on it, and then thought about it as I was talking about something else, I'm thinking, why not? Um, and it would actually be kind of cool. I'm not going to do it now because, number one, potato. Number two, streaming. So, double potato. But it would be kind of cool to do an FPS difference comparison, you know? Um, like, how many triangles do we got under the vanilla Grove of Banabi from Ramiros versus this one? What, if any, FPS hit does it have, like, on a modern PC? Um, I'm not jumping to make this change right now. But I'm certainly open to it, and I'm really curious of, like, what's the gain? <laughs> May, well, so maybe, so this would be on, no, so what, what, good call out, Gonzo. And um, for those of you who aren't aware, I don't think I've actually talked about this really publicly, but we have, amongst the team, talked about, like, the ultra total overhaul mod list, which would be, like, using all of the BCOM plus things and using all of the ultra HQ, everything, you know, and, and going for things that don't fit on total overhaul because they will make my steam deck crash. And so what, what it would, we would do is we'd have the, this one be on the ultra total overhaul because it is less performant. Excuse me. It is in theory, less performant. And this one would just be on total overhaul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 4K and all this stuff. There's like the the Rocky or West Gash stuff, you know. Those are beautiful mods, but they just eat the VRAM and they crash my Steam Deck up. So, the cluster of map markers. Oh, okay. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so yeah, this would be the more minimal one, perhaps. Okay, so yeah, I think this is a... Yeah, okay. You know what, Altario? You basically just sold me on it, like, right now. So, we're going to go ahead and put this under... Um, changed stuff here at the bottom um or well because it is an it is a new mod so i'm going to put it under landscape and we'll note that it is replacing the original and i think this is a good change The name enhanced may give you the impression that maybe it's like adding a bunch of content, but yeah, it's actually kind of doing the opposite here. Huh. And thank you so much, Altario, for the perfect formatting. It's exactly what I need and want. Yeah, yeah, all right, cool. So this is one I never got around to actually trying locally. Um, you know, when I was AFK for a few weeks um, with the blight, this thing kind of dropped. Yeah, and uh, and Sophie has kindly uploaded um, a, a version of this that fixes placement of saplings for BCOM to the 6.x issue, if we scroll down here. All the way down the temporary home of this, at least until uh, Massive Juice, as I understand it, gets to um, gets to put it actually on the real mod. Uh, all right, GitLab, I won't react. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 this is one we're definitely we're definitely adding this for sure. Um, I feel like the saplings having the ground cover stomp effect is a little weird, but. It's probably worth it for the performance gain. And frankly, probably not that jarring, I would think. All right. I'm going to put this.
this one on here and then we're gonna fire up Momo and we'll install some mods yeah yeah for sure I play with it cranked up <laughs> so that's my bad you know yeah right because of kind of how it swirls them up not at the moment Gonzo that's a great question that is something that should be exposed to Lua eventually at the moment it is not uh yeah because that is a that is a core shader the stomp is in the core shaders and not a like post-processing shader oh me oh my okay um this is gonna go into a I think not yet currently existing ground cover section Hmm, my eyes skipped ahead and saw this. Awesome, that's exciting. Anyways, staying on target. Perfect, okay. <clears throat> Great. Okay. So, without further ado, let's take a look at Momo, which is Genounce's mod uh, manager in development for all platforms, supporting OpenMW specifically. And uh, it's been on my to do list to check it out for weeks and weeks. And uh, we're just doing it. We're doing it live right now. So. Here we go. I assume there's a... Whoa, no. Uh-oh, what's happening? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and kill that. Yikes. Did I get choppy there for a second? I think something happened. Something not good happened. Yeah, okay. <laughs> On my end, the laptop kind of yeah, okay. Oof. All right. We might have to we might have to pause this for later. Do you announce if you're still with us here? I'm so sorry, my dude. I'm going to give it one more try. Here we go. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> What happened? Oh man, there we go. <laughs> uh, so I think I'm back. I think and uh, and Gene Ounce, I think we can chalk this up to just Linux things too, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, running Python in general on multiple. Uh, yeah, maybe this is something the C plus plus version will solve. Anyway, to be continued. To be continued. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my my. Okay. So, um, I should mention though, Genounce, the uh, the hacker programmer wizard that he is, actually, in between yesterday's stream and today, we were talking about the template and all that stuff, and like banged out a GUI program for a mod repo template. Um, so I don't think we're going to have time to look at that today unless you have a working executable for me. I can look at it right now. Um, but yeah, we will revisit this. Maybe I'll try. Do you know it's working on a C++ rewrite of this? Yeah, exactly. Wow. We, <laughs> um, we'll revisit it again. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. And I'm so sorry. It blew up on me. 
Oh, yeah, my bitrate is still kind of wonky, according to Twitch. Um, my internet looks like it's, as of now, okay. Wow, that's a bummer. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that, Gnounts. I wouldn't say that's as much of a... Yeah, okay, right on, okay. We'll take a look at that then, probably in the coming weeks. Weeks, But, uh, nice. Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, it's so cool to have, like, a desktop thing that we can give people, you know, to get started. Um, yeah. Oh, my, uh, well, so, okay, all right, are we ready for one more potential lag bomb? I can drop into Bash, you know. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> here we go. All right. <laughs> huh. So this is really interesting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we back now? Hey, Sothus. Yo, welcome. So this is really interesting. We have several megabytes large files named JSON, OS, and Sys. They suspiciously look like... Yeah, they suspiciously look like Python module names. Gene Ounce, is that a clue or? Yeah, welcome. Hello, hello. Yeah, uh, Linux things though. It's for sure a Linux things thing. Welcome. Yeah, we were just trying to run Gene Ounce's mod manager. Working on uh, a mod manager for OpenMW and um, it blew up my laptop. Well, so, okay. If we just look here. What is this? Postscript document text? Yikes, do I even wanna? Wow, so yeah, it just wrote like a huge document. Yikes, okay, cool. Yeah, pip installed or something like that maybe. Oof. We'll work on this though. All right. Uh, cool. Oh, really? Okay, your installer script. Okay, yeah. I don't know if that's going to be a... on Because of Linux things, I don't know if that's going to be something that just works on every setup. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Well, we tried. Ooh, yikes. Uh, let's go ahead and activate our VM. Which reminds me... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna include this in 5.10.2, but we need to update the local stuff so everybody can have a virtual env. Hot, yeah, doing something right. Completely lagged out my. I have 32 gigs of RAM on this thing, and um, it wasn't. Oh yeah, it did. It looks like it did kind of do something. <laughs> All right, so let's go. We have a little bit of time here, uh, Sector. What do you think about uh, Bal uh, Balderwind look here, huh? I'm gonna go ahead and grab that link you gave me privately for the repo. Okay. Turn-based combat for Morrowind, anybody? Okay, and uh, you said, yeah, you said uh, attend me is something we want with it. Cool. So we'll throw that in also. Yeah, okay, well. We'll find some friends for our cheater character. No problemo. Yeah, it actually kind of... It kind of works, um, and somehow Sector was able to make it work with 0 0.48 constraints even. Um, and <laughs> every time I play with this, I have like the Final Fantasy battle music in my head whenever I get into a fight, you know? It's just kind of like, we need some more like, uh-huh, 
detecting combat stuff. Everything that happens after, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's grab a ten me. Don't try that at home. Yikes, that's copy pasta fever. Ha <laughs> ha nice, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to leave that in there. Um, yeah. Okay. Ah, interesting. So, Sector, should I do a dev build or 0 0.48? I'm going to do 0 0.48. Um, and we're just going to do my cheater character. I'm hoping that won't break anything. Yeah, you do. And just some cool stuff has been added for 0 0.49. So probably. Oh, really? I didn't. Hmm. I didn't really notice that one, Sothos. That's interesting. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do 0 0.48 for now. I wish the music was working, but something's borked with my audio right now. Um. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's like OBS doesn't want to see my... Well, I can hear Morrowind. Yeah, that's wild, Sothis. I mean, if you need help uh, reproducing some bugs, let us know. Hop into my uh, into the website channel that we have on there, and we're happy to help you reproduce stuff. Okay, well, I have Morrowind music. Here, I'll turn it down a little bit so it's not too distracting. TCL. Give myself a reasonable speed. Turn the AI on. Okay. Yeah. Wow. The BS and OBS. All right. Yeah, so just to demonstrate how this works, but we need to find like a, uh, a party. We need to get a party put together. Off the top, I don't play with companions ever. Um... I don't ever play with companions, so I don't know off the top of my head where to go to get somebody to join me. I need somebody to recommend. While we do, while we wait for a recommendation, we're gonna go pick a fight with some mud crabs to demonstrate how all this business works. Uh, and, and wait real quick before we even do that, let's just make sure the mod loaded okay. And as you can see, maybe right here, you'll notice we got some balder wind loading with no complaints, at least from the output. Two mud crabs. Um, good call out. Yeah, yeah. Eight plates in Balmori. There you go. Yeah. All right. We'll head on over there after I pick a fight here. Boom. So now I can't move. Wild mud crab approaches. I can't even draw my weapon. Oh, <laughs> steal that. There you pick a fight with the guards. Yeah. Galaxy brain people over here. Me, I'm just a boring player, I guess. All right. So I'm doing nothing. I'm just waiting. Turn base. This is how it all works, right? All right. And as you can see from my log output down there, sending in it to player, let's do this. Boom. All right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Just take a moment to ad admire the clouds, but I don't have Sophie's clouds plugged in here. So, where I'm... all right. Well, I feel like the next thing we got to really do here can't apply to all actors. Kinds of weird stuff they have. Oh, interesting. Hmm. All right. Let's just take a look back here. Got a little bit of noise here from Sector's Code where it's kind of... Yeah, yeah, thank you. This would be um, thanks actually to Zesterer. Um, and actually I was prototyping, so Sophie has had some awesome ideas for like dynamically adjusting various parameters with Lua. And so that's what I've been trying to do. That's why it's enabled here. But yeah, Z that'd be Zesterer's Clouds. Only applies to followers or attackers who directly attack a player. Okay. Interesting. So, like, yeah, when people are fighting in the background, they're not going to go all turn-based. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want that. So, uh, Sothis, that's a great question. There's only one way to find out. Let's hit our old friend here, Fadunius. 
I'm so sorry. Uh, you know what we gotta do. <laughs> now he goes. Then he goes. Now I go. Oh, but I can successfully run again. Oh, okay. We gotta resist arrest with each of them. Hopefully, do I lose my turn? No, okay, it's my turn. Probably just punch. Good call. Yeah. I can't open the me the menu though. Yikes. Charge in guard. Is that that dude over there? <sighs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I think we're stuck because the charge end guard. So I got to do this in a. All right. All right. Mulligan. We're doing over. I'm gonna go to Balmora. And uh, maybe we can find a follower there. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get like a mob going. All right, and I'll punch them. Just punching. Good call, Solthus. <laughs> that lead uh, forty TAI. All right. All right, put up your dukes. This guy. Oh man, I think we've all wanted to punch him at some point. You know what I mean? Don't you tell me about the sixth house. <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> I think I've cheated up a ridiculously huge hand-to-hand. -hand. Or I think the test player just gets that. Well, I, I have a turn with somebody. Um... Oh, okay. They're like punched out, actually. They're totally punched out. This is where we need like health bar mod or something. Damn it. So if you're fighting three guys three turns, they each get one turn. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where I think maybe we don't have enough. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's something I think we could implement, but I wonder if we have enough introspection into like the combat situation, at least in 0 0.48. I'm not sure. I haven't really mucked around. You've of course done some wild stuff with combat, so like anything's possible. Yeah, Erm was talking about doing a health bar with shaders. I feel like that could go in your stat shaders, even. Alright, well, I'm gonna turn with these people, but they're just like Okay, I think I broke it again, Sector. <laughs> Let's do one more try. Speed agility checks, totally. Yeah, you want to balance turns with stats, I feel like. Um, and not have it just be strictly my turn, your turn, you know. All right, we're going to go in one more time. I'm going to lower my hand-to-hand -to, -hand to a reasonable level, because I forgot about that. And then we'll punch some people again, and hopefully not knock them out instantly. Come on, there you go. Sheesh. Um, we'll give it something reasonable. I don't want to miss too much, though. There we go. Playing Oblivion. Okay, right on. Yeah, it's actually, I found it's pretty interesting to play the other games, at least to get ideas for cool stuff to do for Morrowind, right? Like Skyrim level design is pretty good. Clutter and stuff, you know, dungeons feel very dungeony. The audio is very atmospheric. Skyrim gets atmosphere really well. All right. I think we're ready. I'm going to punch is this. Who is this guy? This guy? Oh, yeah. This guy loves me. You ready? I've still never played Daggerfall. Yikes. I punched him out, too. Okay. I get another turn, I guess, because does it detect that he's down? All right, well, the fight is over. Oof. But I'm starting another one. Here we go. I was attacked. Oh, I got two of them over here. Okay. 
so it's my turn. Daggerfall, definitely on the to-do list. Actually, I should fire up Daggerfall Unity on the old Steam Deck. I'm sure it runs great there. Does it have like, uh, yeah, my cheater character is way too cheater. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you know, does Daggerfall Unity have gamepad support or would it be a pain in the butt? Kind of like OpenMW is kind of a pain in the butt at the moment. If they can't move or attack, their turn is forfeit. Okay, well. Attack delay. What's going on there? Yeah, okay, thanks. I'll try. I'll just try it, right? How bad could it be? Steam Deck actually manages to map keyboard and mouse reasonably well a lot of the time. Um, it works for OpenMW. It's just janky for the... For the interface, user interface. Well, I broke a shield with my fist. So this isn't really a good test because, yeah, my cheater character is too cheater. We don't have a party. Um, a turn timer. Yeah, that's an interesting idea too, right? So we could have kind of like a Chrono Trigger-esque where it's like turn-based but kind of real-time-ish. You get time to tax, okay? Mm. Yeah, I definitely can't punch when it's not my turn. Sophia, me too, by the way. I never make it out of the first dungeon. It's, it's either I die or I'm just like, eh, you know, but I've only ever played the DOS version in DOS box, so. All right, uh, Sector, can I ask, you know, what's the, Sector, what's the um, release blocker here on this one? What's it going to take to get this in the hands of users? Are there any bugs that are like really, you know, kind of stopping it from being? Solthus, I mean, are you into Star Wars? Have you ever played Knights of the Old Republic? That's Baldur's Gate, I think, kind of, right? I've never really played Baldur's Gate, but I definitely played KOTOR. Fantastic. What else can I do? Punch him. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, Knights Old Republic is such a good game, you don't even really know it's Baldur's Gate. Um, but it is, kind of. Oh, you want to fight too? Okay. No problemo. You can join this fight. It's kind of a neat idea, and it really, it actually really works. Um, oh, I see. I got you. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, I, you know. Look, definitely looking forward to the release of this. And this is one of those things like, you know, I'm wondering, does it pair with Open Nevermind? Oh, wow. Yeah, see, that's the kind of like what Sophia just said about the re-rolling until you start with good stuff. That's the kind of non-design that I'm not really a fan of. But, hey, you know. Turns you into a chainsaw. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Just because Open Nevermind gives you that Baldur's Gate kind of performance or uh, perspective. Hmm. Interesting. It's horribly broken. All right. Well. Something about this, though. Like, it's cool and also a little weird, right? Like, I'm just like, hey, come at me. It's not your turn. You can't. I mean, yeah. Just the only thing really that I'm missing right now is like the Dragon Quest battle music. You know, we got all this love going on with the OpenMW uh, dynamic music. We just need to get uh, Nobuo Omatsu up in here. Is he retired? <laughs> we need some JRPG music though. I know you're thinking Baldur's Gate sector, but yeah, my initial vision for this, because I grew up with Dragon Quest and other JRPGs, was a JRPG vision. 
Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here. And yeah, thanks for joining with the raid. Um, hope you're having a great day. Hey, hey. Morrowind turn based. Here it is. So can it detect? Yeah, agreed. So that's like, or again, or mentioned that on Discord, and I was just kind of like, ooh, yeah, that could be really neat, you know? Um, food for thought. Oh, I see. Okay. Ke in keeping with our uh, open Nevermind, it being inspired by Neverwinter Nights. I got you. But uh, I suppose Lua isn't quite as introspective enough as it needs to be to let us know when people are laying down like this, right? Like, it can't possibly be his turn. Somehow you're detecting it. Good job. <laughs> so one thing that we can do, yeah, so this, I agree, honestly. Um, and one thing we can do, too, um, you know, once you get back into the Lua of things... Um, Maybe you can make an interface or Sector can make an interface and your mod can detect his, you know, um, and we can live and coexist happily together. Can I move now? Yeah, I can move. Okay, so if I look here at the output, I'm still technically in combat <laughs> with two people, I think. Um, no doubt some guards that are like aggro because I committed crimes, but where are they? Where are they? Sector, what happens? Question for you about this. So if I were to just like hightail it to Caldera, what happens? Like does combat just stay initiated or when the game drops combat, does it, does your mod, you know, stop it? I really can't find where these people are. <laughs> Should I try it? Should I run away? I like third-person mode. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, you know, for walking. Here we go. There they go. Oh, no. That's a... That isn't even one of the ones. Wow. Okay. Whether you're holding down the sneak key. Okay. Yeah. And that can be a little janky, right? Yeah. Um... I remember you saying, Soltis, that that worked better in 0 0.49, though. I wonder if that's still the case. They did deprecate some things. Um, okay, so I'm in combat technically with three people. We still didn't find the other two, but we found a new friend. It's, his, it's this one's turn, or...? All right, I can't attack now, nor can I move. Hey, you. How do I know you're not up to something devious, he says. <laughs> kind of like when I took the shirt off the dead guy, and then he asked me if I got my clothes from a dead guy. That was fun times. Yeah, right. So I think that's kind of happened here, right? We have like two guards somewhere within the active grid that are aggro because of my crime level. Yeah, okay, so it's probably best in, like, dungeons and stuff still. So, yeah, I think this is kind of an issue that would break somebody's game, unfortunately. Uh, has broken mine at the moment. Yeah, for sure. No reason not to just go with the best one every time. It makes the directional like choices a little like maybe based on your skill you could do a roll on which directional attack you do um yeah also not save safe okay well yeah so i can't move right now i can change the camera though hey interesting 
I can look around. Okay, well. That could work or something like that, right? Like some kind of a safeguard to break out. I'm really curious where these guys are, though. Ugh. What I want to do, kind of on a tangent, I want to learn how to, uh, from the Lua P context in the console, how can I run code that I wrote in my mod, right? And maybe we could have some for, like, debugging purposes. We could have some, like, uh, you know, break combat or something like that, you know? Because, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can run arbitrary Lua in here. I'm just not sure how to run it from your... Uh, you know, from your mod, actually, like I dot or something like that. Ooh, oh, we have interface. Ooh, yeah, okay, we do have access to the interface here. How about that? Hmm. So yeah, you could potentially add something to your mod's interface, um, to to you know, kind of like a fix me. <clears throat> oh look, fix me is a Lua function now. No. Maybe not. All right, Sothis. See ya. Good seeing you again. Take care. Yeah, we're about to wrap this up too here. Um, okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so that might be something at least while it's a in progress in development mod. You know, maybe we can have an interface to get out of combat because I'm stuck. I got to quit the game here. <laughs> Yeah, totally cool to have Sothis drop by. That's awesome. Love it. All right, well, let's go back to our list. Stay friend or friend that breaks you out of combat. Yeah, yeah, something, some kind of safeguard I feel like is needed while we're still a little uncertain about how to keep things working right, you know? So, okay, fix website stuff. We did it. GitLab issues review. We did it. 6.0 editions review. We did it. Works great in dungeons too. Oh, speaking of dungeons, that reminds me of Sothis dungeon map. Uh, like Daggerfall inspired thing. I got to try that. I still haven't tried it. Uh, but we got to try that. Okay. 5.10.2 wrap up. I think we will end the stream today by calling it a wrap here. So let's, uh, let's open up GitLab. And let's pull up the merge request. And we're going to put a bow on this one, folks. Uh, all right. One approval from the approval team. Review team is just gonzo at the moment. I'm going to have to add more peeps into there for sure. I only do this every so often, so I forget how to do it. Um, but, yeah, gonzo. So we got CI pass. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and deploy this to the beta and staging sites. Yeah, the 3D map. Yeah, that's super cool, right? Maybe uh, while this is deploying, we'll install that. Because I don't think I have that installed local. Let's install it right now. We'll just go ahead and pull up Sylphus profile here. I apparently don't have it bookmarked. Do, do, do. Daggerfall dungeon map. Here we go. I apparently have downloaded it. Yeah, here we go. Cool. Already got it. It's in my... Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Yikes. Don't try this at home. There we go. All right, all right. That's fine. Let's toss it in, shall we? I just got a huge mess here. I got to clean up all this Oblivion stuff. I still never figured out why uh, Fallout 3 didn't load. Mm, okay. Now, let's...
let's RTFM real quick so we don't get in there and not have a clue about what to do. Hit ready spell plus activate simultaneously and you'll trigger free cam mode. And I believe there's a bit of a cost to this, right? Every 10 seconds, your health, magic, and fatigue will be drained based on your mysticism, willpower, and endurance respectively. Awesome. So it's like a power that you have and there is a cost to it. Let's see it. I'm not going to spawn in Balmora. We'll go straight into Animus Artis and check it out there. Super acrobatics. Who doesn't love jumping? All right. So, ready, spell, and activate. Right? Did I do it right? You! Get out of here. All right. Ready, spell. Right? Oh, I don't have a... No. I'm doing something wrong here. Sanity check ourselves here. Activate. E. Okay. There we go. Wow, neat. Whoa, whoa. Okay, cool. So I cannot, like, fly up and down too much. You can see it draining my, uh, you can see it draining my health. Too cool, but it gives me a nice look about what's around. Yeah, I got a 3D map. Some crazy person made this mod that lets me fly around in a map. <laughs> hey, Celtus. Jump and sneak. Oh, with the map open, let's do it. Yeah, I'm not able to move up and down. Um, did I turn the shader off? No, um, I don't think I did. Let's open it up. Shader on. We'll turn that off so it doesn't kill me. Yeah, right? Totally cool. Um, so is there some shader effect I'm missing? So keep in mind, Solthus, I'm on an Intel GPU right now on my laptop. So maybe it's like some Intel potato uh, issue. But yeah, I guess I'm missing a shader, and I also can't fly up and down. Um, oh, wait. No, no. Here we go. There we go. Jump and sneak. I was doing it wrong. Here we go. Yeah, you totally can. No, no, no. You totally can. I'm, <laughs> I'm just derping. You got to hit the jump button. As Soltha said, jump brings you up. Sneak brings you down. Um, painterly looking. Oh, okay. Neat. Very neat. Um, yeah, okay. I remember you telling me about that, actually. Um, I'm not seeing that at the moment. I wonder if there was any error in the, in the output here regarding shaders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, no error. Hmm. So I guess the next step is to try this on my non-potato. So I can see the paint shader. Hit F1. F2. So I have a bunch of other shaders. Maybe it's conflicting with those. Uh, but yeah, this is what I got. Um, hmm. Adjustments. What is that? Color adjustments. Oh, Okay. Yeah, huh, I don't know. And then, yeah, we're definitely enabled there. The command line for starting cell. Um, so what I do is my launch wrapper actually just edits my config uh, before launching. And there's like a start dash cell option, but I think there's a normal, okay. Video. Post-processing on. Is that what you're talking about, Solvis? Um, Sector, I can tell you more about that off-stream, though. 
um, what I do. But yeah, I think there might be a dash dash starting da start dash sal. Um, in any case, oh no, just start. Maybe it's just start. Uh, and then you'll want to do skip menu also. Yeah, no problem. No problem. It's probably related. So this is, a, you know, it's a good laptop with a modern CPU. But yeah, it's like Intel. Even modern Intel is no good. So I bet you that's what it is. I bet on a normal graphics card it looks good. Let's go to a, shall we though, go to a Dwemer Ruin. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's try it here. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, um, yeah. But, but none of those are, um, oops. None of those are, whoopsie, are from Sotha's mod. These are just from, like, my shader pack that's not, um, not currently enabled. It is interesting, though, that they all show up here still. But nonetheless, they don't exist, um. Get out of here. I'm trying to fly. Awesome. Yeah, there's something really bizarre about seeing the player character like that. Hmm. Yeah, definitely not getting any shaders still. So it's probably related to my graphics card being a potato. Because, yeah, I don't. Uh, let's turn the brightness up a little bit. Or a lot of it. Yeah, no. Well, I will be for sure trying it on a non-potato machine, but it is that time, so... Uh, huh. It is that time, though. We got to wrap up the, uh, the stream here. Yep, yep. Yeah, I did notice that. That's a good touch. I love that touch, so... Uh, Momo review. We did do it, but it was a bust um, for various reasons. 5.10.2 wrap up. All right, we did wrap it up. We basically did everything but the music, but I'm calling it. Uh, I'm calling it checked because we got a full eight out of eight done today. So yeah, thanks everybody for joining. Happy modding. Have a lovely day, and I will see you on the next stream. Cheers. <laughs>